think it's time, so uh, I'll start. Um, I'm going to present uh, on a little plugin for QGIS that I developed uh, not too long ago. Uh, and the point here is um, uh, my background is operations research and transportation modeling. So, uh, and the things I'm going to talk here are mo most modeling, it's a little bit foreign. So first I'll go some, what is transportation modeling? Uh, what are these software alternatives that are op open source alternatives? Uh, you know, why doing this? And, and a few features and, and then just show how the, how the, the plugin works. Uh, so what, what's transportation planning? Uh, transportation planning, uh, transportation modeling is usually in an urban or regional scale, it could be a metropolitan area, a state, a country, multiple countries, as they do in Europe. Um, and people moving or goods moving uh, from one place to another is supply, is demand, the network is supply. Um, this, is, this is how it usually works. Uh, you have the activity system, which is peoples and businesses and et cetera, and you have the transportation system, which are the, uh, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, you have some sort of equilibration, congestion, and this feeds back into, okay, uh, people decide to move because they're commuting for too long. Governments decide to build new roads uh, or to demolish, demolish bridges, whatever it is. Um, but we're not going to talk about all that. We're not going to talk about the feedback. Uh, we're going to talk about, OK, you have the people, you have the city, the infrastructure, and you need to find uh, 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 how many people. In the end, what people want to ask, I want to know how many cars are going to be on Avenue, First Avenue uh, on the peak hour in 2030. That, that's the question. Um, it's a very easy approach. The thing started in 1950s, the Chicago Area Transportation Planning, uh, uh, Transportation uh, CATS, Chicago Area Transportation uh, 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 System Planning. Um, and it's a four-step, it's called, is, is known as the four-step model, trip generation, distribution, mode split, and traffic assignment. Trip generation is, okay, how many people, how many trips are people are going to do? Are people going to, they're going to leave from work in the morning, come back home, they're going to then leave to the supermarket, come back home, pick their kids up, come back home, things like that. And it's basically basic statistics, uh, or you can do something a little bit more complicated, but it's usually basic statistics. The second part is, where are people going? Trip distribution. So you know where people are going, you know people are leaving their houses to work, you know where people work, but who is going where? It's usually done with uh, gravity models, as it started as a Newton gravity model, and it start and ev evolved to more meaningful uh, impedance functions, if you call, if you will. Uh, and the idea is just algorithm is very simple. It's about 40 years old. It's just you don't know what's the parameter that would make when the model is applied would make the the matrix the uh, the magnetic matrix, matrix makes sense. Uh, there's iterative pro, uh, 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 um, uh, iterative proportional fitting as well, which is just you got an old matrix and you adjust things to look good. Um, and there's destination choice models, very complicated econometric models, usually logic based, some probit based. Um, but that's a, a that's a, a, a topic discussed with economists. Same thing with this mode choice. It's usually very complex nested logits uh, with a with a econometrics uh, that is way above my head, at least. Um, and the last step is okay. You know wh that people are leaving their houses, going to some place with uh, 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 by a certain mode, say car. What is the route they take? Uh, several procedures you can say. Oh, everybody takes the shortest path. Well, maybe in the countryside and, I don't know, any very uh, 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 low-populated state, that makes sense. In San Francisco, anybody that's in a metropolitan area knows they don't take the shortest path. They take the, probably the, last, uh, 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 the, last, uh, the, the quickest path, which 
depending on the day is depending on the time is one, depending on the time is another, because there's congestion. Uh, and um, and that's the equilibrium part is equilibrium is is finding the equilibration where you have uh, congestion effects. So I know this is extremely boring, but uh, we need to understand. I, I need to go over this to, to go where where the thing sits, uh, where equilibrium sits. So there's a ton of commercial software. The cheapest one is Transcad, which I'm, uh, I'm I, I know better. Uh, cost twelve thousand dollars. Way all the way through Amsum, which is probably the most expensive, that costs in excess of thirty thousand dollars, and these are prices that Americans pay. Uh, if you go to developing countries, they're paying a lot more than this. I know agencies in Brazil; they're paying the, an excess of fifty thousand dollars for Visum, which is something you can get in the U.S. for about twenty thousand. Um, so it's it's very expensive software. Uh, there are other uh, open source software. Tranus is one developed in, in, in Venezuela many years ago. Less com it's all Fortran and Fortran 4. Um, there is a promise for a QGS plugin in 2015. Uh, then there's Metsin, which is a micro simulator. It's really for traffic analysis. And TrendSims, with a, which was a US DOT project that ended in 2011 without too much success. So why developing Equilibre? Uh, well, there are no good open source alternatives. Um, commercial software black boxes, um, good way of training you know, my programming skills. I'm a civil engineer, so I, I'm not a programmer by, by trade. Uh, and it was a way to consolidate all the code I developed during my dissertation work. Um, And YQG is, well, it's, as far as, as I understand, is the best uh, GIS platform uh, or open source GIS platform available. And it's really easy to plug in Python and Cython code. Um, so it was a, it was a no-brainer. And it all started because I contacted one of those companies asking for access to their binary files intermediary. And the, the president had the guts to call me and say, Send me to that place with all the words. He he didn't. He almost asked me if I wanted him to spell it out. Uh, so I I I said okay. I'll, I'll do my own. Um, so I and I already got some funding for it. Uh, uh, there's a research institute in Brazil that saw that I, that I was working for last last year that wanted me to continue with it. So there's uh, there there is interest. Um, and but there are a few issues and. The first one is network representation. If I ask all of, but all of you what network is, I bet at least 95%, well, maybe somebody in this room is going to talk about intersections. Everybody else is going to talk about lines, especially in the GIS world. It's not about lines at all. In transportation, when you go to an intersection, you cannot turn left sometimes. You cannot turn right sometimes. You have a you have a, a, a time, a delay on the node. It's, not a, it's, it's a traffic light. It's not, a character, it's not because it's backed up, that, that street. It's because there's a traffic light, or there's a stop sign, or there's a, 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 a constraint for turning right or left, or both. Um, so uh, the other one is there's no efficient, and all in, everything in transportation modeling is matrix-based. It's all the demands, all the inputs, and all the outputs. It's all matrix form. And there's no matrix format, efficient matrix format inside QGIS. So I'm tapping into HDF5 through other platforms and, and some NumPy or reading text files as a result, as we're going to see. Uh, and the other, the core algorithms are very specific uh, for operation, operations research. You can go to the new. new uh, library and GAT, a, a lot of, a lot of pre-done stuff. For transportation, there's very little, very little, very, very, very little. Uh, people don't share well in transportation, or people don't share in transportation. There's no open source in transportation. Um, and performance is a key factor. Um, it's probably the most likely. Um, so you have an idea. I think I'll go with this over later. but. Um, I run, I work for uh, an M, a big MPO, a major MPO, a Metropolitan Planning Organization in the US, 
and I have a brand new two Xeon 6 core computer with 32 gigs of RAM, which is a nice computer to play with, but our model takes in a pretty good software, it takes 24 hours to run. So uh, we're not talking about uh, small problems. It's computationally very intensive. Um, SCAG, which is the LA area, their model, the full run takes a week on a four Xeon with 256 gigabytes of RAM, right? It, and this does not scale to clusters well for, because shortest path problems don't scale well to clusters, uh, uh, at least what we're talking about. So again, the network issue is the biggest one. And uh, we need a good editor for QJS. It's probably the last thing I'm going to tackle in uh, QJS. When you move one link, you need the node to move together with it. There's no, uh, and Transcad is probably one of the most success, successful softwares in the area because they developed an, a, diff, a new uh, uh, geographic file uh, uh, standard or uh, format where the, all the links have, na, 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 uh, have uh, embedded to them their node. So you move the link, the, move, the node goes together. You added the link, the node receives it, so everything is connected. And there's nothing like that. Uh, shape files don't do it. Uh, Postgres, you can have a, a table that has more than one geography, but then you would have to link two links and one field that is the node of them, A node, B node, would have to go together. It's not a really a trivial problem. It's not something that I'm going to solve in, you know, in, the, in the back of the envelope. Um, so Equilibri is, of course, focused on this four, these four steps. Trip generation, I mean, the statistics, you can go in Excel, do it, and I mean, I'm, I'm not going there. Trip distribution, it's a, remember I told you it's a 40-year-old algorithm. For the Brazil Institute, Research Institute I'm working for, they needed it and didn't have the software. I had to re-implement re it because there's no free alternative. I mean, it's a 40-year-old. There's no magic. Everybody knows how to do it. Every single professor does that. I did that as an exercise in, in grad school, but nobody puts their code online. Um, so I had to, and then after that, I had to prepare the network. So how do we transform shapefiles in graphs? Right? We're talking about the mathematics behind it, not only the physical representation. And then I had to do traffic assignment. And I have a few other GIS tools that are there. They are just uh, customizations of regular GIS tools we have. Um, because transportation people, modeling people, are not really good at GIS. You, can't really ask them to do like a series of 15 uh, operations to get on something, unless it's something that is very well versed in GIS, and most people prefer the button where you do the, the whole shebang uh, at once. Uh, and I decided to do, you know, just to hone my skills, like to, do it, to do it nice, so I had to do it like fully threaded so it doesn't freeze, nice prog progress bars, and uh, to do it in Cython so I can release the gill and do everything in really fully uh, par in parallel. These has, some algorithms has a, have a really high perf uh, memory uh, um, uh, consumption. So using actual memory, uh, ma shared memory is necessary if you want to run uh, uh, efficiently. So, and then after that, I was just building a bunch of GUIs for trip distribution, for uh, network preparation, and for traffic assignment. Uh, for traffic assignment, there is the standard all or nothing assignment. There's equilibrium, which has congestion considerations. And again, here, the most used uh, algorithm is called Frank Wolf, which is a common algorithm for nonlinear problems uh, that is being used since 1973. Two, if I'm not wrong. No, that was 19, 1975 is the paper from LeBlanc. So, and it was just lately, early 2000s, it started being replaced because it doesn't really converge all that well. And route choice, I'm just going to put my dissertation algorithm there just because I have it. So, uh, although other algorithms will probably be uh, put there. And the other thing, I told you that GIS people are not really good at mapping. Uh, to do flow maps um, is not 
particularly uh, easy in, in QGIS to find, you know, put thicknesses and colors and gradients and stuff. You can do it, yeah, any GIS, uh, probably anybody in this room can do. Uh, if you've got a transportation modeler um, full of people, I'll probably be able to count on one hand how many can do it in any GIS software they want that is not a modeling software. So I, I wanted to put something automatic there as well. So as I told you in Phoenix Metro, I don't, I don't even know if I should put Phoenix there because I'm this, this is something I, I do outside the agency. So the, all this work I, I did outside the agency, the agency has, that I work for has nothing to, to, to do with it. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not a, a huge network. So we have 47,500 47, links and 3,000 zones. So we're not going from all to all. It's 3,000 to 3,000. Uh, and assignment alone takes eight hours of these 24 hours. And the other is all the econometrics that I told you about, trip distribution and uh, mode choice and et cetera. These are extremely complex mode, uh, uh, discrete choice models. Um, but there are a few things right now in Calibri that make it unusable from a practical standpoint. The first one, you don't have a network editor. So you would be able to develop the first network. But let's say you want to do 2020 and you're going to have to move an intersection. You're going to have to do it for the nodes and for the links, which will probably not work well. So um, the other thing is that uh, 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 we need a good interface for HDF5. Some of these algorithms will, will output uh, 5, 10 gigabytes of data to disk. And writing ASC files, ST files, is, is not a way to go. Uh, especially because it's everything very well scalable from in a single in a single box, so you need a file a, a file container that is uh, like like HDF5. Maybe there are other alternatives like then I don't know. Um, and if you want to do a matrix, there is a standard matrix. Uh, somebody yesterday was talking about a standard for parking. There is a standard for matrices. Open, uh, open standard for matrix called OMX that was already adopted by the industry. All softwares, or at least the new releases, the next releases, will have access to this format. So if you want to bring from a proprietary format to through equilibrium, you would be able to because everybody can read that format. Um, and interface that, and there's a ton of open source software for other, other things like uh, choice modeling for econometrics. There's this really good software called Biogene uh, by Bierler, uh, which has Python bindings, Java bindings, everything you want. So if you want to plug into to QGIS, it would be, would be a snap. Uh, so let's go a little bit to what uh, QGIS is. So when I told you that, what do you want to lose? This is the national, this is called Freight Analysis Framework. It is the national map for freight. OK, so what you're looking at is the freight for a given day or a given, uh, no, for a year, uh, for of trucks in the, net, in the national uh, network, OK? So um, that's, that's one thing that people want to know. The other thing that people want to know is this. Where are the bottlenecks? So where do you have, though so these are volume over capacity ratios. So where you have red, you have congestion, right? Uh, but this is only considering trucks. So places that are, that are uh, uh, heavy, oh, sorry, this is not volume of capacity. This is trucks over cars, I'm sorry. So you see in LA, metropolitan areas are kind of orange because, yeah, your proportion of cars is much higher, while the interstates in the middle of nowhere, you have basically trucks. Uh, another map would be volume over capacity. The, the freight analysis framework don't have all, uh, volume over capacity on their uh, on their website. So, um, so let's let's go to let's go to Equilibri. Actually, I should mention another problem with Equilibri right now is that um, I use Windows, as, as you can see, uh, and um, most of the code is in Cython, and Cython is compiled. So to do it multi-platform platform, oh, need people that use Macs to compile to Mac, because I have no way to do it. 
and the users don't know, would not know, transportation planners would not know if they're not good at, um, at uh, 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 GIS, imagine, and uh, in programming. Uh, so that's, that's another problem. Uh, uh, I, I need to find people good in, in Linux and QGIS and, and Mac to, to do that. So to the demonstration, I did all US data, so I'd like to use Brazilian data for, for a change. Just, just be like, because I like to visit my hometown sometimes. Um, so this is the natu national network. Uh, when we, it was, we, we were talking a lot of people, you know, routing, PG routing, and Google, and et cetera. Uh, and, and the one you talk about uh, these routings, they give, ra give router, uh, route alternatives. Uh, if you use Waze, you'll probably notice that it's not shortest path because they run heuristics, right? They don't, it's not shortest path. It's not that extra they are running. It's some sort of heuristics. They reduce the network, and they simplify the network and run the, their algorithms. Because in that scale, that's what you need to do, and because you users don't really care about a 2% difference. When we are talking about equilibrium in a network, we are talking about equilibrium to a, level, a relative gap in the, in, the, in, the, in the convergence, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. Uh, which is 10 to the minus 4 is what's minimum recommended by FHWA, by the F Federal um, uh, Highway uh, Administration. And, but most people are going to 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 6. So n no heuristics. There, there, are, there is no time for, there is no allowance for heuristics. So it's all, uh, it's all exact algorithms. It's all exact, as exact answers. So, uh, so Equilibrium just launches as a little, as I mentioned, there's some GIS tools. And because I'm a Transcat guy, I'm trying to, you know, how Transcat tools work and just improve on top of those and, and, and generate them. So the first thing is, uh, the first tool is network preparation. And what this does is there are two options. A friend of mine who is a professor at um, Buffalo, SUNY Buffalo, uh, she she said that she wanted to use something, but she downloads the shape files from Tiger, and there are no nodes that are only lines. And she needs to generate the nodes because the demand from a network, transportation demand, is also on the nodes and not on the links. They start on nodes, and she needs to link these things. So she needed me to generate the nodes. There are tools in QGIS that generate the nodes, but most of them generate all the nodes in between, not only start and end, and then you have to clean. I mean, again, it's not user-friendly for the transportation uh, modeling, planning user standpoint. So I just uh, made a little, you know, a toolbox that would allow, this doesn't really matter, uh, to use, you know, create a new node layer if you want, or just use the node layer. But if you, uh, in her case, she's downloading data from, um, from, she's downloading data from Tiger. If you're downloading, the, bringing data from another uh, platform, you would have the nodes because the, the other platforms are not dealing with shape files. They are, they are dealing with transportation networks. So you, you can also use the nodes and use the, the node IDs, whatever you want. And, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to run this because it takes a, three minutes in this network and, and, and I, I don't want to waste uh, your time with that. But you can just run and say, okay, in my A node and B node in each link, tell me what's the ID here, the ID for, uh, uh, for the A node and B node, right? The node ID for, 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 for A and B, where the link starts, where the link ends. Uh, and topology is very important. Then we can have, uh, then we go to traffic assignment. Uh, remember I told you that loading networks uh, matrices is very slow because reading files, reading in Python, reading these files and uh, uh, the files that are open in QGIS through Python is extremely slow. I don't know if anybody ever tried. If you do anything a little bit bigger, it, it just takes forever. So I'm working with, uh, uh, I can work, work with the matrix, but I can wor work also with a NumPy array and just, uh, um, 
load a NumPy array, you know, give me a few stats, and you know, I can display the matrix if I want, and, and, and things like that. Um, but um, if you don't want that, you can also open, you know, a, a matrix file as a, oh, it's gonna freeze, great. Um, okay, you can open a, a matrix file as a, a table as well as I have open here. Uh, then in the network, uh, another thing that it's often, um, when you don't use GIS files, you use length for distance. In transportation networks, and because we're talking with time, and what Google probably uses too, is you have one length or one time in one direction is different than the other direction. So characteristics and capacity, and probably everybody lives in a city where some street has three lanes in one direction, or maybe two, and one or two in the other direction. So things are one physical link, one, one, one GIS link is actually translates differently in, in two directions in, in reality. So uh, we have to account for that too, so load differently. Again, this, this is all about translating a shape file to a graph, to a, to a mathematical graph in memory. Uh, so, which is my link ID, so to give the response of flows. Uh, what's the time, if, I, if, I'm gonna, if the links are gonna be bidirectional or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes some softwares export unidirectional links, so you're gonna have two GIS, two shape files, two li links, one on top of the other. One being direction one going A to B and the other going B to A. So you just go uh, uh, in the direction of topology. Um, then the, the assignment method, uh, right now only uh, all or nothing is, is implemented. The other very uh, important thing too for transportation modelers is skims. Uh, a skim is, okay, if, when, let's say you are assigned, okay, I wanna know the shortest path. Everybody using time, and now I'm using time. Right, I'm, using, I'm minimizing time for in both directions. But I wanna know the distance. I not, not only wanna know what was the time that each person, that they took from, to go from each orange tree to destination, but I wanna know what was the distance, or what was the cost, or how many tolls which person went through, or how many bridges, or how many, or if you wanna do marketing, if you wanna select a field that that link that shows where a banner is, I wanna know, you know from one origin to, through the destination, how many banners of one particular company that person drove through. And transportation uh, consultancy companies often do work for marketing agencies for that particular reason. I, I did a few of those in my time. And for uh, uh, maps, so we can have the thickness, right? Just make thickness so you see flows as, as I showed you in, in the, um, in the um, uh, Freight and Framework website. And I already cheated, I put it to a start with all the fields, uh, uh, field already. So you can just assign, loading the matrix, I told you, takes forever. It takes, it takes, it takes a fraction of a second. If you load an NumPy array to load a, a text file, it takes forever. To build the graph also takes forever. Um, assignment, you saw, it's a fraction of a second. It doesn't, you don't really don't even see the, 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 the task bar or the, the progress bar. It's just assigned. And this is a 600 by 600 uh, problem. Uh, and as a result, let me just turn the nodes off, you have the flows for Brazil. So these are truck flows, I'm, I'm working on the national model for uh, um, that, the grant I got is actually for developing software for this national uh, freight model in Brazil. So uh, there you go, freight flows, truck flows in Brazil. For what, this is one particular product, I didn't remember what it is, I think it's automotive industry looking. There's a lot, a lot going from Sao Paulo to, by, and there's an automotive industry here in the middle and another one, a big one there. So I, I think this is automotive related stuff, automotive uh, economic sector, whatever they call it, uh, or whatever the translation is. So, uh, so this is the end game. Right, this is, this is the answer. You have the, the, the answer as actually a table, 
And this is the thing I'm writing right now. I'm writing, oh, I'm sorry, I'm writing a CSV file. I could be writing DPF, but uh, so this is it. For each link ID, I have a a flow, B flow, and total flow. So how many people, trucks, whatever it is, cars, whatever you want, and then you you could be doing this with uh, whatever you want with fish. I mean, it doesn't really matter uh, on each direction. And as you put other things, you put, for example, equilibrium. So you're going to have a volume over capacity ratio. You're going to have time, congested times. You're going to have um, indicators like how many alternative routes each OD have. You're going to see that you know, for some people, you know, regardless of the congestion, that route will always be the same. For some other movements, you have 50 possible routes. Uh, there's a ton, a ton of uh, outputs that you can get, uh, that people get in, in regular modeling. I, I, right now, I don't really dream about getting there because I'm the only developer. So I mean, there's only so much I can develop. In between, my wife and kids go to bed, and I go to bed. And I finish the stuff for Brazil. So I mean, uh, so it, it, it goes rather slow. Uh, so I already uploaded the, the, the presentation. It's all in the website. Uh, and with all my contacts, possible contacts, if you don't find, from, if you don't find, me, find me with this, call the cops. Um, so now I think I can open for questions. Sure, it's already on the website. I uploaded it. Already uploaded. It's, it's, I uploaded uh, uh, over lunch, so you can definitely uh, get it there. Um, so that's it. Oh, I can, I, can, I can leave it this one, right? There's no point in going to it. So I, I'll take any questions. I know it, it's a completely, I, it's a completely uh, foreign subject to most. So I'm glad there's only two or two or three asleep. So. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. Oh yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was thinking. So, so the, uh, when you were doing that network setup, those seems to be a lot of pretty cool tools. That I mean, you would. I, I mean, for we have this. Application but there's tons of other, like the setting up of the network. Yeah. It just seems like that's, that's like super valuable. Yeah, well, most of the setting up of the network has to do with the parameters that you need when you are running an algorithm, a transportation planning algorithm. So uh, if you are using equilibrium, you're going to need capacity. You're going to need um, um, which volume, de how, how congestion works. It's Nonlinear, but it's quadratic, it's cubic, it's fourth. It's usually BPR, which is the uh, Public Bureau, uh, Bureau of Public Roads. Um, it's the most common function, but you have several functions. So you have a lot, of, a lot of parameters, but most of them are just extra fields on the data on the graph. On, on the, and it's just a basic forward star, if anybody knows what it is. It's just more fields on the forward star to, uh, to allow for applying these algorithms. So there's not much. Uh, it's really about the, co the, the, the cool stuff that what I liked, uh, uh, what I was, was able to do was actually just read the, the shape file as a graph and connect everything and yeah. transform shape in a graph. Um, so, uh, yeah, but that's it. Because I was working on a travel, kind of traveling cell phone for uh, the Washington area, and it was just really difficult finding any type of network that would work. And so it just seems like yeah, no, you're you're very welcome uh, uh, to 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 try it out, and it's basically and everything is Python Saturn, so you don't even need to use through QGIS. You can just go behind it and and use it, you know, through through the API. The API is still kind of shaky. I, I don't really, I'm not computer science. I don't know how to do it. So you know, I'm I'm, I'm trying as it go. So. There is a there is an LRS um, plugin for QGIS. I never used um, for two reasons. Uh, first, um, there was no time, uh, and second, I never I understand LRS only v vaguely, so I'll first need to 
understand how you know all the science behind an LRS behind a, uh, before I go through trying it because it would be just an exercise in futility if I if I did it without the, the appropriate knowledge or at least I feel that way. So, but there is a plugin for that. Is it possible to use it with OpenStreetMap data? Um, yeah, I actually tried. I, I was going to do, uh, but you you are going to have to download the the Open OpenStreetMap. Or, 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 or the network. I, don't, I never tried to load the network, the graph in QGIS. I don't even know if it's possible. I was going to show an example uh, in, um, in, in Sao Paulo, for, for Sao Paulo Metro in Brazil, using OpenStreetMap. And I was able to do it, but I, didn't, I was not able to come up in time with a demand matrix that would you know, result in a somewhat decent map, as I, as I already had for Brazil. But um, it's... It, in terms of performance, it's pretty fast. Um, it's, what, a second and a half in this five-year-old machine to run in a network, Brazilian network, which is, which is decent, of a decent size. Um, so you can definitely do in that type of data. Uh, and I have, there are a couple of researchers in Africa using this uh, for their own, as the API, as the routing API, the traffic assignment API. Uh, and they're using in pretty and big metropolitan areas networks, and, and they say it's it's working okay. So it's it's difficult to compare with pla with other with commercial platforms because, I mean, I don't even have the money to buy the the software. I don't have access to my UCI to the university license in, anymore, and um, my boss not even happy that I'm here. Imagine if I use the agency software to do. I mean. Would not work. So I, I don't even know. I think it. I, I think it's definitely slower than the commercial software, definitely. But it's. I think the pla the, the the performance is pretty decent. It was actually the the route choice model that is going to be implemented, is the current uh, ch uh, assignment method for the California statewide model, uh, freight model. So it's um, it was it, wa it wa was accepted as a good algorithm, fast enough. So it's it's there. So it works. I, I just don't know how well. How well? Yes. Any other questions? No. Oh, thank you.